approximately three out of every 10,000 children will be diagnosed with a cataract. Parents or caregivers might identify that they see a white reflex or white spot in the child's eye. Alternatively, they might notice that there's a photograph with an asymmetric or abnormal red reflex. Pediatricians perform well child exams and during that time they might notice a blackening or a darkening of a red reflex that would also arise suspicion. Children uh, generally will present with something such as visual inattentiveness, uh, clumsiness, or uh, unfamiliarity with their environment. Uh, that's typically what we look for in younger children. Things such as nystagmus, strabismus, or a difference in the way that the eyes look may be another way that you could pick up a cataract. In older children, uh, you generally will see that the vision tends to drop and the child will come in having failed either a pediatrician screening or a vision screening at the school. When any of the aforementioned conditions have been identified, in addition, certain conditions, systemic conditions, uh, have an association with congenital cataracts, and these kids should be identified and sent to a pediatric ophthalmologist. Also, if there's a strong family history of cataracts uh, in childhood, they should be sent to see a pediatric ophthalmologist. The first uh, and most important thing when looking at a cataract is deciding whether or not it is visually significant. In younger children, this can be challenging to determine, and for that reason, oftentimes you have to rely on the size and location of the cataract and whether it impairs the retinoscopic examination or the fundoscopic examination. In older children, seeing a decrease in vision or an increase in amblyopia makes you uh, start to consider whether cataract removal becomes necessary. Uh, after that, determining whether the uh, opacity is unilateral or bilateral and the age of the child at presentation. These are important factors for considering the timing of congenital catara or cataract removal. Uh, the younger a child is when they present, the more quickly you actually want to remove that lens. However, in a child identified at birth with a cataract, we actually prefer waiting until 30 days of age to remove that lens. Reason being, this helps to reduce uh, anesthesia-related complications as well as certain forms of uh, surgery-induced uh, uh, challenges. So four weeks would probably be the optimal time for a unilateral identified uh, congenital cataract. In a bilateral uh, congenital cataract, you have a little bit longer window. Eight to 10 weeks is probably the optimal age for removing those cataracts. There, the important thing becomes removing those two lenses very, very close together, so within a week of each other. The general sequence and steps to pediatric cataract removal in many ways mirror what we do in adults. However, due to the unique patient population, uh, the uh, characteristics of the pediatric cataractus lens the scleral and uh, corneal reduced rigidity, the intact formed vitreous, and the increased propensity for postoperative inflammation, there are subtle differences. Um, for example, uh, placing your surgical incision superiorly both offers the protection of the lid postoperatively and allows you to make two smaller paired incisions that can be closed easily and respond better in an eye that has reduced scleral and corneal rigidity. A uh, continuous curvilinear capsulorexis can be made either manually or with a vitrector, um, and this is sort of the surgeon's preference. Removing the lens actually does not use phacoemulsification. Instead, we use irrigation aspiration to remove the bulk of the lens, with the vitrector being something that's also available if there's a denser core of the nucleus. A uh, primary posterior capsulotomy is also important to be made in younger children in that amblyogenic uh, age range. Reason being, they're at a very high rate uh, risk of posterior capsule or reopacification or an after cataract forming. So performing a primary capsulotomy allows you to hopefully decrease that risk. The 
patient population is definitely unique and it's very different from treating cataracts in an adult. In an adult, you put in an IOL or an intraocular lens that allows that patient to see 20-20 uh, or as close to that um, at distance or near depending on what the patient and you kind of discuss. The child is actually still growing and by virtue of their changing length of their eye, shape of their cornea, their refractive status is constantly changing. This presents a very unique challenge when it comes time to deciding how you're going to replace the refraction, refractive element that you removed in doing that cataract surgery. Uh, that can be done by leaving the child aphagic and correcting them with contact lenses or glasses or you can actually place an intraocular lens at the time of your primary surgery. And all of these decisions need to be weighed with uh, consideration as to the age of the child, uh, the lens status of the other eye, whether they, that eye also has a cataract that will need to be removed, um, and sort of the follow-up that you anticipate having with those parents. Um, which is why I think it's very important to tell the parents that they're going to be forming a long relationship with you. Because not only uh, are they having surgery, but they are starting a long-term management of a chronic condition. So they are going to be needing to patch, to uh, do eye drops, to come see you for glasses changes, contact lens changes, all of these things that you know the adult cataract patient just doesn't have to do. Refractive error and the changing refractive error in children is the big question mark that we have right now in pediatric cataract surgery. We know that you can put a contact lens on the child's eye, leave them aphakic, and, and change that as the eye continues to grow. Or we can put an intraocular lens in at the time of surgery and manage any residual or developing refractive error with a contact lens, glasses, or surgery down the line. But what we don't know is how we can best predict what kind of refractive error changes you're going to see in those children as they age. And I think the more that we know about the way that a child's eye grows and develops in response to having had cataract surgery, the better we're going to be at predicting whether uh, an IOL placed at the time of surgery or down the line is a good option. And we're going to be better able to decide what would be the optimal IOL to choose for that child. Uh, other things that we're doing are surgical innovation. So 10, 15 years ago, we were not placing intraocular lenses in children with the frequency that we are today. And so the techniques and the skill set that we're using to place these lenses is increasing dramatically. What we can do both with that initial IOL placement, with IOL exchanges years down the line, or with innovative concepts like putting two lenses into the child's eye to account for initial refractive error and long-term refractive error are things that are all options for, for us right now and areas of really exciting research. <music>